Hello everyone and welcome to my 386 486 rescue. Let me explain. I originally found this motherboard in the scrapyard with a Cyrex CX486 DLC 40 GP CPU. And I believe, um, well, I did some research and I, I do believe it's a 20 megahertz clock doubled 486 upgrade for a 386 slot. However, this motherboard is not boot. It had a Varda battery and it experienced severe corrosion in this area, such that even the external battery plugs popped off. Well, the, it had pins for an external battery. Now, I might still be able to solder something in there, but as you can see, the original traces have actually corroded away. Probably she's dead as a doornail. I did rescue four megs of the RAM and put it on this 386 motherboard that I rescued at a later date. The fun thing about this 386 motherboard, which came with its own four megs of RAM, and if you take a look at this short, you'll see that my first boot of this motherboard was completely successful. I did happen to have an ISA video card, and this is a lovely Western Digital video card. And then I was able to add a parallel serial expansion card. I do have an IDE card, an IDE floppy controller card, a 16-bit ISA that's currently in one of my 46 systems that I will rescue and put in here. However, that's for another video. What I would really like to do is remove this 386 processor and exchange it with the 486 upgrade just to see if it works. I probably will keep this a 386 system because I don't have any 386 systems, right? Many philosophies on removing these old chips. I do have a chip puller, but experimenting with it, I didn't like the way that it rocked and that it was hard to hold and pop the chip out. I'm assuming this would be fine for what it's actually designed for, which is the memory chip holes, and that's fine. Those are easy enough, right? However, I'm going to use, and have used, a flathead screwdriver. And anyone, let me know in the comments what you think of the philosophy of removing these chips with a flathead screwdriver. I don't know if really there's any better way of getting them out than to use a flathead screwdriver. And we've got our 386 chip. Still has the tag. Never had a heat sink, never had any paste on it. Gets a little warm when it boots, but hey, you know, it's designed to run without. So I'm going to set that aside. And we'll bring in the motherboard with the Cyrex chip. And it's a shame. I might be able to rescue some of this tag memory, the tag memory and the uh, cache memory for another motherboard. The, this 386 motherboard actually does have 300 and I think it's 384K of cache. I believe it's pretty much maxed out, which is nice. And... The nice thing about this motherboard, and I so much wish that it booted, is it does have a 486 socket. This had to have been a very late term motherboard in the 386, in the beginning of the 486 era, with the 486 um, socket, and also a 386 socket. Using the same flat screw head driver philosophy, We'll go ahead and pry up this CPU. I can't really get in that side. And, well, I, I won't lie. This actually came out a lot easier than the original 386 and the other motherboard. And I don't see any bent pins. Everything looks good. I will save that 4 megs of RAM. 
I'm not actually going to throw away the motherboard. I do keep most of my non-functional motherboards because you never know when one day it will decide that it loves you and will boot even though it, it has refused to in the past. All right, we'll take our 46 Cyrex pin one. Pin one right here. And we're going to do the part I hate the most, which is firmly pressing it into the socket. We'll listen for the click. I'm actually going to lay it flat. All right, I believe it's on there sufficiently, I hope. When we did this before, as I showed you on my 3 to 6 short, I have an old crusty keyboard, AT keyboard, and we're using a power supply that we've rescued from one of our Packard Bell Pentium 60s. That currently isn't booting, but we're going to borrow the power supply and the switch. And we're hooking it up to our monitor over here. And let's get that monitor up. And let's see if we can't bring that into a little bit of focus. All right. And then let's see if we're going to be successful here. I must admit, I really don't want to lose any more hardware. Get the set on. It should be set on VGA. There it is. And we are going to boot. We have a signal. VGA is on. It makes a RAM. And we have 486 Love. That is outstanding. 384K Shadow Ram, 64K Cash. That would be on, well, I don't know. That I don't know if that's on the CPU. It's probably on the motherboard and the Shadow Ram. But we are showing a 486 CPU right now on our 386 motherboard. Hallelujah. So, we have the 486 that works, the upgrade. We have the original 386. Like I said, though, we're going to keep this motherboard, a 386 motherboard. Uh, I might run some bench test marks, test benchmarks, just to see how fast this actually runs. But here we go. Looks like a successful Saturday morning.